Welcome to another Telltale Books video. I'm Greg and I'm going to be starting another new, sorry, I keep doing this. I keep getting fascinated by these authors I'm stumbling on in, in other works and, and uh, deciding to um, deciding to shoot these these videos and start doing a deep exploration of them because they're authors that I've I've read many of their works by already in, in the past and I've loved their works. Um, many of them are golden age science fiction authors, stuff that I've, I've grown up with, but I haven't read them now since the 1980s, 1990s at the most recent. And I'm going back and rereading some of the, my favorite stories and, and just falling in love with them again and deciding I want to read it all. I want to read everything they wrote. And so the latest is El Sprague de Camp. And I must admit, when I was young, El Sprague de Camp was not really one of my very favorite authors. There were some stories of his that I loved, but he seemed to me more of a fantasy author than science fiction. And of course, I was only science fiction back then. So I was a, a little less than thrilled with his works, but I did like his works and I did read his works. And, and, um, now I, I've gotten over that stupid um, prejudice against fantasy. And, and so I'm liking pretty much everything I read by him. I've already done reviews. One with Emily of the Blue Giraffe, which we both love. That was published in 1939. That was his 13th story on my list. And I didn't do a review of it, but I did read a story called The Gnarly Man. And that was his 11th story. And that one, it was good, but kind of sort of like The Day is Done by Lester Del Rey. But I thought The Day is Done was more powerful. So I have covered some Mouse Bride to Camp, and I'm going to go through and cover it all. And his very first short story is a, a really interesting case. Because now, everybody pretty much agrees that the golden age of science fiction started with the July 1939 issue of Astounding. All right, that had Black Destroyer in. I believe it was July. It had Black Destroyer, it had Trends by Isaac Asimov. It really was an excellent issue. And it was edited by John W. Campbell. But a number of facts here. First of all, John Campbell had been editing Astounding for over a year already, I believe. Or at least a year. Yeah, he had started editing. He had taken over from F. Orland Tremaine in 1938. Okay, so he had been editing the magazine for a while before the famous Golden Age issue with Black Destroyer. And when you, when you think about Campbell's criteria for his type of story, which is what the Golden Age of science fiction focuses on, is his kind of more scientific story. Really going all the way back to Who Goes There by John W. Campbell, the, the famous story that became the movie The Thing, that is very much a golden age science fiction story. He even wrote it under his um, pseudonym of Don A. Stewart, which he used for all of his new type of science fiction stories that he wrote. And that was published in... I want to say October 38, September 38, something like that. Almost a whole year before Black Destroyer was published. So then I read the Isolinguals. Now the Isolinguals were, was published in September of 1939 in Astounding Stories. And in September of, of 1939, 1937, and September of 1937, it was still being edited by F. Orland Tremaine. John Campbell had not taken over. And this is the September 1937 issue of Astounding Stories, um, featuring the first part of the serialization of Edward Elmer Smith's Galactic Patrol, which I think is number three or four in the Lensman series. But this issue also contains The Isolinguals by Al Sprague de Camp, his very first short story. And I didn't read it in that fragile 
issue of Astounding. I read it in another Nesfa Press book titled Years in the Making. The Time Travel Stories of El Sprague de Camp. Again, with a beautiful Bob Eagleton cover. Nice hard cover collection. Well-made book. These are awesome. They're not too expensive. They're available as brand new books from the Nesfa Press website. If you're not buying these, you're missing out. So that's where I read the isolinguals this time around. Um, I also do have it in this book, which I mentioned with Tomorrow's Children. Tomorrow's Children by Paul Anderson is also in here. It's called First Flight, Maiden Voyages in Space and Time, edited by Damon Knight. It's, a, I believe, a 1961 or something like that. 1963 paperback. And this is the first edition paperback. And, uh, you know, it has Paul Anderson's first story, Tomorrow's Children. It also has Al Sprague de Camp's first story, The Isolinguals, as, as well as a number of, of other great stories, which I've already talked about on, on this channel in previous videos. Excellent, excellent book. And it's had, this is the first edition of it. It, it was reprinted many times um, in rev and in revised editions. There was one where Damon Knight got together with Martin H. Greenberg and did it. It's the same book, but with some more stories added to it. It was published, I think, in the 1990s. You know, so it's it's been reprinted regularly. And as recently as I believe the 1990s. So there's lots of different editions of that book available. And like I say, if you want a brand new book with the isolinguals, go to Nesfa Press. So um, why do I think the isolinguals is so interesting? First, the basic synopsis. people suddenly start talking in different languages. Not the same language. I mean, some people talk in the same language as some other people, but it's all different languages. And they're existing languages from different periods of history. It's like these people are being taken over by the personalities of dead people from, from the world's past. And, they, and the, the scientists in this story start getting clues to what's going on when they get some of them speaking um, more modern versions of languages. You know, there are versions of languages that are, are only like 100 or 200 years old. And, and then in one case, this one guy starts insisting that he's his own father and his father is still alive. Um, so these people that seem to be taken over by the spirits of people that lived in the past, but they don't necessarily have to be dead spirits either. Um, and it, and it spreads like a, like an epidemic. People all over the world are just suddenly, they're not themselves. They're insisting there's someone else and they're speaking a different language, an old language. Okay. So the basic premise here is very much is very Campbellian. It's very much the golden age style of story or or for that matter, even the H.G. Wells style of science fiction, where you pose a situation, whether it's fantastical or scientific, you pose this situation and then think about what's going to happen. Think about the implications of it. That's very much what Campbell was all about. H.G. Wells was kind of sort of getting at that in his fiction, like War of the Worlds. You know, what if, you know, in Wells's day, European countries were invading Africa and, and taking over. And of course, in Africa, they were these primitive tribes. They didn't have technology beyond spears and fire. You know, and, and men were going in there with guns and dynamite and, sh and metal ships and, you know, just kind of um, 
taking over from the native peoples, destroying the native cultures. And so Wells wrote War of the Worlds going, what if that happened to England? What if some advanced situation from another planet came to Earth with all this high technology and started just taking over and treating us like, like Europeans were treating the Africans? Okay, so that kind of what-if scenario, that kind of thought variant scenario is very much what Campbell's Golden Age in Astounding was all about. And that's kind of what's happening here with the isolinguals. You have this really fascinating what if, weird situation. And um, people are thrown into it and have to try and figure it out, have to try and deal with it. And of course, being a science fiction magazine, it's dealt with in scientific ways. Now, the story kind of wraps up with a very 1930s easy um, super science explanation which I don't think is very satisfying so the ending of the ending of the story wasn't very satisfying but everything up to that and I felt the ending of the story just kind of was rushed and wrapped up really fast like like the camp had this great idea but he didn't really you know this was before Campbell before the golden age he didn't really know how to take it there because he didn't have any examples yet of this type of story and so he ran he fell back on what everybody else was doing in the 1930s and it um you know I I don't feel that that he did a good ending to the story but and for that reason I I hold it back from getting top tail status It could be better. If only he would have taken that one extra leap of brilliance and, and done a true Golden Age story in 1937. But um, I just, I find it really fascinating that this is September 1937, two years before the start of what everybody agrees is the Golden Age. And De Camp is essentially writing a Golden Age story and publishing it in Astounding. So, the actual beginning of the golden age you know people use that july 39 issue as a convenient starting point but that actual starting point is a little blurry because like i say who goes there qualifies as golden age um, the isolinguals comes damn close to being true golden age and of course there's plenty of stuff written in the 1940s that you wouldn't really call golden age science fiction because it's more like the stuff that had been published all through the 1930s so there isn't a clear-cut beginning to the golden age and you can see in this story the development towards the golden age of science fiction and that's that makes this story pretty important But he falls just short and so it doesn't get top tail status but it's worth reading it's a good story worth reading worth your time it's just a short story so um i'm gonna get going on elsprog de camp one of the the great fantasy and science fiction writers and i'm gonna try to report on everything I can get my hands on by Al Sprague de Camp. This being number one. I hope you'll like this video and subscribe to join me for this journey and, and all the other authors I'm reviewing and I'll be here doing the videos.